For Paralympic athletes, challenges at 2020 Games echo long-standing barriers Eliza Seely, a world champion and Paralympic gold medalist in the paratriathlon, woke up one morning in January 2020 with an infection in her leg. When it didn't go away for a few weeks, she underwent surgery. After the infection came back, another surgery was required. Several months afterward, she was hospitalized again, throwing her training drastically off course. I begged to have my stitches out early so that I could race in. I hadn't worn a leg in two and a half months, said Seely, whose left leg is amputated below the knee. No running, no biking, very little swimming because I could not get in the pool with stitches, so pretty much limited to strength training on one leg and rowing with one leg. Seely qualified for the games, despite only being cleared to train in March, but then confronted a new challenge, a diagnosis of endocarditis, an infection of the heart that caused blood clots, in addition to other existing conditions. She, like other para-athletes who have struggled to make decisions and plan training around an event delayed and continually threatened by the coronavirus, have had to balance their concerns over contracting the deadly disease while still fulfilling their athletic goals. It's a priority for many athletes with disabilities, especially those who are more at risk or immunocompromised. Team USA's Eliza Seely celebrates after winning the women's triathlon points two category during the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. Photo by Charlie Tribal your AFP via Getty Images as Paralympians prepared for the Tokyo Games, which began on August 24. Questions lingered around the Olympic and Paralympic officials' COVID rules and protocols. New Zealand's Paralympics team skipped the opening ceremony, the only one out of the participating 162 delegations, citing safety fears amid new infections in Japan's capital. Team USA, along with several others, took a limited team of staff members. For some athletes, the pandemic added more obstacles to their Paralympic journey than anyone could have seen coming. In order to compete at the highest level, athletes with impairments need resources, from training facilities and the equipment you need to physically compete in their sport to routine medical care for all kinds of conditions, Dr. Amy Haltro, a professor of PMANDAR and pediatrics at the University of Michigan told the PBS NewsHour. Questions about whether athletic and medical organizations can meet those needs have surrounded this year's event and echo the long-standing barriers people with disabilities have faced in getting support in their daily lives, both before and during the pandemic. In the end, Seely decided to attend the 2020 Paralympic Games, feeling reassured by the really hard line on what is and isn't acceptable set at the Olympics earlier this summer including the rules put in place on frequent testing. The second week of the Games, Seely won her second gold medal in the points two class of the women's triathlon. Like the Olympics, this year's Paralympic Games, which kicked off last week in Tokyo, are markedly different from ones in the past. For the first time, the Paralympics, with a record more than 4,400 athletes, has received a prime time slot on American network television. And, similar to COVID-19 protocols for the Olympics weeks ago, there are no fans in the stands, and many teams have had to reduce their rosters of staff. David Brown, who won the Paralympic gold medal for the T11 class of the men's 100m dash in 2016, experienced troubles with training amid pandemic restrictions, including his guide sustaining an injury. James Avery, his guide for the event, had been injured since the beginning of the para-athletics season, and it soon became clear he would not recover in time for the Games. Simultaneously, restrictions limited his ability to train with others, which, as a blind runner, is an essential part of Brown's year-round training. Eventually the training center did shut down, Brown said. I ended up moving off-site in order to continue my training because if I were to stay on-site where I was living at the training center, I wasn't going to be able to train. Brown arrived in Tokyo more than a week before the opening ceremony. He was questioning his and his teammates' safety even as the Paralympians were held in a bubble on a US Air Force base, isolating to prevent possible infections. How close is everyone? 
Is that going to be mandated? How are they going to know? He said. David Brown of Team USA and guide Murray Stewart compete in the T11 class of the men's 100 meter dash at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympics. Photo by Naomi Baker Getty Images Though not all of his safety questions could be answered, Brown said he appreciated that the precautions Team USA laid out for the Paralympic track and field team were transparent. Everybody's been very compliant. I mean, because, of course, we all want the same thing. It's one of those things where, like, I don't want you to get sick. You don't want me to get sick. You know, we all on the same team. Despite having to adjust to training with new guides, Brown said he was able to reach new heights as a sprinter while training during the pandemic. Long story short, I found who I was as far as a sprinter, Brown said. I was able to find myself as an individual and as an athlete and I was able to improve on my form and my technique of sprinting, too. Both Brown and Seeley personally felt their respective teams had been transparent and helpful with COVID-19 precautions. However, Becca Mayers, a deaf-blind Paralympic swimmer, left Team USA in July, after her request to have her mother come with her to Tokyo as a full-time guide was denied due to the organization's pandemic restrictions. The US Olympics and Paralympic Committee released a statement saying, the decisions we've made on behalf of the team have not been easy, and we are heartbroken for athletes who are unable to have their previous support resources available. And several Congress members issued a statement, requesting that the committee change its ruling for May years. But, the swimmer still did not get the resources she needed, and didn't travel to Tokyo. To compete successfully at that level is really a phenomenal thing that these athletes can do that. But they also need the support systems in place to help them be able to actually be able to do that, and do it to the best of their ability, Haltro said. During the months leading up to her diagnosis, Seely said she underwent several blood tests and started antibiotics. She said she was discharged the first time she was hospitalized because doctors told her the tests were contaminated and therefore inaccurate. The infection in her heart was left untreated for months and months and months, Seely said. I was at my wit's end, to be honest. Thank you for watching. Please, subscribe.